I probably have done a video on this subject, but uh, at least if not video, I know I must have posted some. Maybe uh, is it article? Okay, whatever. But I've talked about this several times. So I received this message from someone on my WhatsApp earlier today, and it is, um, hi, can I can I convert? <clears throat> Can I convert a manual to automatic for Project 307? Uh, you could see my reply, yes. And then yes, uh, how much does it cost? Can you handle it? And uh, my response was, will it cost about 500,000 naira or more? Uh, yes, I can do the conversion. And then his response was, uh, I can just buy another one with that amount. Now, let me, um, uh, before I will continue, no, you cannot buy another 307 in good condition with 500,000, if that's what you're saying. Unless you want to buy um, an abused, messed up vehicle. However, um, I know I've already seen the cost of converting um manual to automatic yes can buy you another vehicle it can if, compared to the cost of converting automatic to manual i repeat the cost of converting manual to automatic can buy you another car compared to the cost of converting a manual to automatic no automatic to manual now, if you have to say, um, for the two years, if I did 500,000, I know it's likely going to use, I, I, I didn't even do the calculation. I just like, okay, I pros, uh, maybe on average, like 500,000, a little bit more. But now I start, if I want to start to list out the parts that need to be replaced, including the level. For example, if I'm going to do that conversion, Manual to automatic on the project 207. I won't. I won't take anything less than two hundred thousand naira. Yes, two hundred thousand naira as celebrate as a with no no cut, nothing, no deduction. Because I know the kind of stress one has to go through. In a in a automatic vehicle. Let's, let's just say in a project 207 with automatic, you're not touching anything in electrical. The first kind of touching, the only thing you may have to, that is if at all, just I can't think of, I remember right now, the brake light switch, what it looks like on 207. But like I said, you probably may not even need to touch it. So everything that has to do with electrical remains the same in the vehicle. If you are converting, automatic to manual but if you are converting manual to automatic I'll, everything just like i said on this message uh which i responded to him the 500k was just for the for pass for the conversion i have not added label then and i say every wire everything that looks like wire on that vehicle from the tail from the rear from the back of that car to the front of the vehicle will have to be replaced. We are changing the entire, we call it body wire, the tire wire on that vehicle, including the engine wiring harness. So you need to understand what we are talking about. So it's not like uh, this person wants to freeze you some money or want to dupe you or doesn't know what he's talking about. Why would it cost such a much just to change uh, uh, a transmission to something else. Everything that has to do with that wire because it's, it's completely different from manual. So you have to change it. Why, if it's automatic vehicle, automatic 207 or whatever, I want to change, uh, convert the autom the transmission from automatic to manual. All you need to do is just get rid of a few mechanicals and it's like, it's not easy. You're not touching the EC, but if it's automatic, even your engine ECU, your BSI, everything, unless you don't want to buy a used one when you go for the ECU. Otherwise, you have to, if you are buying new ECU, of course, it's likely going to cost over a hundred thousand naira. So that you can program it.
to work with your BSIME or to work with your transmission. However, your engine ECU is different. If it's a manual one, it cannot work with your the trans automatic transmission. So you have to change it. And because if you are buying a used one, you also need to change, you have to buy a complete kit if you are buying used. So you're changing your BSI too. So you may end up spending up close to 100,000, 80, 70 or there about to buy a used complete kit, ECU kit, engine ECU kit with BSI and the kit. And even if you say, okay, you don't want to buy used one, and if you are buying new one, you see, you spend probably even more than the used, buying used one, or probably the same amount. I have even talked about you are changing your radiator, obviously. Even the gearbox mount has to go, the inner CV joints has to go. I, I, where do I even start? See, a lot of things are going. You are, you are, you are changing your, your pedals, you are changing your, the gear lever. You buy the, you also buy the what's it called the gear lever assembly you are buying must also come with that of um, the automatic transmission cable, the gearbox cable. So it must come with it. So it means the price of buying it will be higher than buying only the gear lever assembly. So if you are buying the the transmission cable or the gearbox cable, you also either you buy it complete or you buy it separately. Because the gearbox, that one is already, you have to buy the automatic gearbox. But there's so, so many things you have to change. So, in fact, give or take, we are looking at between that five to 700,000 or even more to complete this conversion. If without doing any cut, without that, as I know some people, they will just want to do any cut and join. Just do it anyhow, as long as it can move. But if you want to do it so, so neatly without abusing the vehicle, so it's a to make it look as if originally the car was automatic. That's where I'm coming from. If you want the, autom the conversion to be done in such a way that you, nobody will know that the car did not even come with automatic from the first the very first time it was produced. It will move very well, behave the way automatic behaves. There won't be any difference. At least 95% or 90 to 95% to everything will be intact, or if not more, more than close to 99%. So, in that case, that's what I'm saying. You are looking at about seven to 900, between, just say between 500 to 900. By the time I start doing the calculation, start listing. I'm only doing mental list. By the time I start listing all these things, all these minor, minor things that has to go. And what betide you if your BSI, if your B, it was, well, it's not BSI, your, what's it called? Uh, I'm trying to remember. Um, ABS. Your ABS too has to be factored in. If the ABS there is one that cannot work with automatic, that's going to be programmed and it can't, be, it can't be reconfigured to work with automatic, you have to change it and buy the one for automatic that can work with automatic transmission and that can also work with the wire. Because if you are changing the entire wire of that vehicle, you must find ABS pump that can work that can work with that wire. So it's not just like you are changing the wire. I think that every 307, every ABS that comes from 307 will work with the wire you put. No, it must be exactly the one that can work with the wire wire you put, the one, the new one you replace the old one with. You can go and find out the cost of all this is. The reason why I'm doing this video is for those who always take things for granted, like, uh, okay, let me buy, even though you know you don't like manual transmission. And you are know, okay, let me buy it. Uh, later I can convert it automatic if I don't like the manual. See, if you don't like manual transmission, just don't even bother buying it because if you buy it, Buy it to the point that if you don't like it, you sell the vehicle. But if you buy it to the point that oh, I can convert it, the price of converting it will buy you another one. But not like what is this guy is saying, 500. I know you too, 500, I will not buy it. What I just gave you was like uh, maybe just an average, just for give you an idea. Without even adding level. By the time I start listening out, if I unless I don't want to do this work, I will. Before, of course, I won't collect this money. 
I will first go tell you, give you, you know, take some space, then list out everything that needs to be replaced. Then send you the list. You will find out that that 500,000 <laughs> that you are saying is actually not going to go over that. Or be somewhere around that, around there. And you know, if you are doing conversion, it, it will just be what is on the list. Once you start doing it, you start seeing things that has to go. There are some things probably that well, slightly maybe could be forgotten why the list was being made. Or with the post on the movie, things will break. Things will break. As long as they can't be used, you, some of the things will work so that it can't be removed. The only way to remove it is to break it. And you don't expect the mechanic to pay for it. If you are the type that, oh no, if, the, if you break that thing, even though it's supposed to, there's no other way than to break it, then you must pay for it. Then I won't do their work. It's as simple as that. Yeah, I, I'm very straight with everything I do. So I will, in the process of the work, we start having issues. Things will pay. So there are some things that have to be replaced. And even while we are doing this, you see certain things that, even though they are still there, or they may not even be part of the work that has to do with them, but if they are already in bad shape, and you know if you use it, it's going to happen. For example, the CV joint. If the CV joint, the, the external one, the outer CV joint is bad, even though it's internal, the inner CV joint, they are changing. You are going to change the outer one as well. In fact, these days, I insist you even buy complete, not just the inner one. You buy the complete CV, CV joint, both the, the right side and the left side, everything, including with the shaft, everything complete. So I won't be going back and forth. Oh, this one, the, this one includes the normal one. This one, no, buy complete for automatic for that engine, everything. So, if you know you are not ready for that, if you are buying manual, then still, you know, you have to use it. You can, if you, you, if you, maybe you just want to do a test, whether it, you like it or not. Well, fine. If you eventually realize that it doesn't work out for you, you have to sell it off and look for automatic, right? It's not like I didn't know all these things. I just, I was just leading. I was like, I don't, I didn't want to be the one to say that when you ask me, how much will it cost? I wanted to say it, but I came for it. I said, well, maybe it has some attachment to the vehicle. You know, for, for example, for me, I could choose to do it. Yes, I could choose to do that conversion if I have a vehicle that I decide, oh, I love this car, I don't want to let it go. Even though I know the cost of doing the conversion can buy me another car, but the devil I know is better than the one I don't know. So I'd rather spend that money, put it, of course, in the process of, doing the conversion, I also fixed so many problems in the vehicle, get rid of some of those things, and so that it may even be neater than, or it would be in better good condition than using that amount to go and buy another car. Because any used car you are buying is also coming with its own problem. So it can no longer be as good as the, the one you, you, do the, you converted, because you must have fixed so many things that probably are not even related to the the transmission, in the process of converting it. So everybody all have different values attached to vehicles. So that's why I didn't want to bring it up to, or suggest to, for him to go and buy another car rather than doing the conversion. But eventually, logic now told him. That's why I say when you apply logic to things, <laughs> you don't need anybody to tell you what you want. The answer will be right there before you. He made eventually, as we are talking, he found out on his own that it doesn't make any sense for him to go and spend so, so, so much amount just to convert uh, a transmission from one type to the other, when he could easily use that amount and buy another car without stressing himself. So, but another point of this video is this. See, if, um, if for example, he said, uh, I think somewhere, um, he kind of mentioned that uh, because of uh, the reason why he decided not to continue with the manual was because of a uh, traffic situation, maybe in his environment. There was less traffic when he bought the 307, but now there's more traffic according to what, you know, that was the idea he gave me. So the point is, um, uh, well, some people don't, I don't know, you have your reasons. So to me, some people will, will be surprised that somebody is complaining that because of traffic, that's why he changed the transmission. 
However, like I did, if you watch some of my videos, you see there was one I did about the 207 manual transmission, especially the TU5 JP. I was very specific on that. I was a little bit silent on the uh, EW10 J4. In fact, the last time I drove, I can't really remember how soft or hard it was, whether it was as soft as that of uh, like the EW10 J4 manual in Poggi 406. But that of TU5, almost all the ones I've driven, they were very horrible. They are the, the pedals, the crush pedals were very, very heavy to the press. As in, like I said in that video, it was no way I could use drive such vehicle without having leg issues, as in my left leg will be in a very terrible position, uh, situation. So I mentioned that. However, before I, I think like a day or two before I did that video, in fact, what even inspired me to do the video was that was the day I drove one Project 307 Phase 2 with TU5 JP4 engine and manual. That is the 1.6 liter in petrol engine. And it was manual. Yeah, the coach was very, very soft. So, you know, maybe someone wondering how come the other ones, or the almost every other one I've driven, were very hard. Or heavy to depress or to press. Yet this song was very soft. So is this? Is this I mean, could it be that the other people they really don't care, you know, to to find out what was causing that crush pedals to be very hard to depress or heavy? Why this song was very soft? So it's possible that from factory they were not that heavy. They are not that hard. So. Uh, I pointed it out. So if you are driving Project 307 and it's a, that TU5 JP4 engine with manual gearbox and the reason why you, are, you want to get rid of the car is because it's very hard. It's, the pedal is, is, crush pedal is actually stressing your leg. Now you need to find out what is causing it. In this case, most of you may have to pull your gearbox, pull it out and find out if the clutch Treasure plate is still good. If the release bearing, the release bearing is still good, it could be one of them. It could be the crush fork. It could also be uh, what's it called? The clutch, um, clutch uh, upper, not the upper one. Because what well, is the slave master cylinder? The clutch slave master cylinder. Like I did, you, I mentioned one of the videos uh, in the past. That one, that was the one that was having that issue, and it was bled. We bled the the clutch, the two of them. Of course, we did the bleeding on the slave cylinder, the clutch slave cylinder. Clutch slave cylinder is the, the clutch uh, cylinder attached on the gearbox. So we bled the system from there, and the, the clutch became very soft. So, which I started wondering what could be the reason is could it be because the hydraulic or the brake fluid in it has expired and started affecting the the how the softness of uh, or the operation of those uh, cylinders. So these are the things you also need to consider. If you drive a manual, I will never touch or bled any of your cross uh, cross uh, system if it's hydraulic. You may have to consider doing that. It may even, even if your clutch is soft, you probably will be surprised that it will be softer if you do the bleeding. And also, I have a case where I have to we change one. It was very heavy, and that particular this left cylinder was noisy. The clutch was heavy, and it was noisy when the guy was depressing it. He replaced it, put a new one, bled it, of course. It became very soft without even opening the, the clutch. Uh, what's it called? Pulling out the gearbox to know if it was coming from the clutch pressure plate or clutch um, on the list behind. Didn't do any of that. So um, these are the things you need to do. I don't think uh, modern Peugeot cars are uh, meant, they are, they are manual gears are meant to be hard for the press. So you may have to, in case uh, your own has a problem. Because if it's it truly is very soft to the press and you are worried and your concern is traffic, come on, I don't know how does it even sound to you? When you don't even feel any pressure to lace your leg to and press that thing and lift your leg up, 
Well, you're not supposed to complain. If your complaint is that you don't even want to move your leg at all, then it's not healthy for you, to be honest. If you just want to drive without even make, moving any part of your body, then guys, not, you, are not, you are not helping yourself. I mean, look at the all the people now have all kinds of diseases because technology is, uh, is making human beings become more lazy and lazy. Technology is not doing everything, even basic things man is supposed to do for himself to be able to exercise himself. Now, human beings now rely on technology to do those things. And yet, they are wondering why human beings cannot live long anymore. People are dying before you know they are one sickness to come and take them off because of so much reliance on technology to do everything. You stay on your bed, you don't even move up, you just stay in one place and using remote to before you know it from morning to night you are in one place. Use it the remote control to control everything. You don't even make any move. It's not good. Honestly, this is not about being bitchy about uh Manual or versus automatic transmission. This is about even your human health. There's nothing wrong in moving, check, moving your body, exercising, let the blood flow very well. But if it's very heavy, if you're concerned that no, it, it, this clutch is very heavy, it's, uh, it's stressing your leg, it's, uh, that one is a different thing. But if it's soft and you're complaining, well, I have nothing to say anymore on that. So I think I have done. Um, Justice to this question. So anybody who is considering buying a 307 manual, yet his passion, his preference is uh, automatic, don't go and buy it. If possible, go and test drive it to know whether you like it. Don't go and after buying, start complaining that you want to convert and just converting it. <laughs> now you know what you should take to do that such conversion. All right, that's all.